here, the Frugal Crafter. Today, I'm gonna share a really fun watercolor project with you. We are gonna paint these magnolias, and you can use whatever watercolors you have. And the really fun thing about this project is that I took a really high quality photo of it, and I uploaded it to snapfish.com. They're our sponsor today. Then I had it printed on a pillow, and they printed both sides of it. It was really easy to do, and actually the first photo I uploaded, I took with my video camera, and it told me that it was not high quality enough, so then I took one with my good camera and uploaded it. And I mean, look at this, this is on fabric, it is like twice as big, and it looks fantastic. I was so happy with this. So if you're trying to think of things you can do with your artwork that's a little different than having note cards or posters made, try pillows, try um, blankets. They even make dog beds and lots of fun things. So go check it out. There'll be a link in the video description or just go to snapfish.com today. I want to thank them for sponsoring and for this awesome fun pillow. It's going to look so cute in my living room. Now let's get started with the painting. So I began by taping my paper onto a piece of foam core and then I'm just using a regular old mechanical pencil to sketch on my magnolia. And I will warn you, these big mechanical pencils will smear a little bit with water, but it's not too bad. I made a little mistake there and what I'm doing here is using a kneaded eraser and I'm pressing it into the into the pencil and lifting it. You never want to rub on your watercolor pencil, uh, watercolor paper rather, because it can damage the fibers and then leave a dark spot when you go in to, um, to paint later. And and I'm just sketching in that second flower before the branch because I find it's a lot easier to make a branch to attach to my flowers than to make the branch first and then try to put flowers on them. So I always do my flowers first. Now I'm freehanding in a few leaves and buds and really that's all you need to do for the drawing. Now I'm using clear water to wet my entire paper. You want to make sure that it's got a uniform sheen on it so that your paint will flow reliably. I'm using ultramarine blue with a little bit of burnt sienna for my sky blue. I didn't want it to be super blue and I just wanted to kind of have um, that soft kind of atmosphere. Notice how I'm adding from the top of the paper and letting it fade out as I go towards the bottom. And now I'm pressing my paper towel onto the magnolia flowers to lift out some of that color. That's a great thing about ultramarine and burnt sienna. They're sedimentary colors and they don't tend to stain your paper. Make sure you let the background dry before beginning to paint your petals. What I've done here is I wet that first petal and then I put some purple at the bottom and a little bit of yellow ochre at the top and let them kind of blend together. I'm going to go around and do every petal in this fashion. Since the petals are quite wet, you want to skip around as you're working because otherwise the paint will just kind of flow into the next petal. Now some of these petals have a little more purple on them, some of them have a little more yellow ochre, and some even have some burnt sienna. You always want to try to go back to the colors you've been using as you mix new colors for your painting. That keeps harmony. Make sure when you're using opposite colors like purple and yellow that you don't overlap them, otherwise you're gonna get brown, unless that's your intent. I've carefully applied the purple paint away from where the yellow is so they can kind of blend up to each other, but they don't end up muddying each other. Watercolors often dry lighter, so if you need to adjust your colors, just go ahead and wet the petal and add more color, just like we did before. Now we're going to start painting the branches, and I'm going right in with burnt sienna, and magnolia branches kind of are nebbly and rough, so I'm just kind of twisting my number eight round brush to kind of get those rough textures. And if you want to add some shadows, go ahead and mix your blue and brown together, and you can give some nice dark shadows to your branch. While the paint's still wet, I like to drag off the little spiky bits that hold on my leaves. So go ahead and pull those right out from the wet paint. It'll look so much nicer to do it now rather than to let it dry and then have to paint them in later. Now I'm using a mix of the dark green in my palette, which is kind of a viridian color with the yellow ochre, because I use yellow ochre in the flowers already, and I'm painting in the buds and leaves on my flower. On this larger leaf behind my flower, I wanted to do a wet and wet technique, so I wet the leaf and then dripped in the green mix that I had, as well as some yellow ochre. Now I'm painting in the stamen area in the middle of the flowers using that dark brown mix of blue and brown and just kind of flicking up little kind of fingery bits. And now I am putting in some of that green I made with the yellow ochre and the dark green and tapping in some purple. And that gives me a nice colorful center of my flower. Now I'm using a watercolor pencil in kind of a mauve color to deepen the shadows on my petals. I'm very lightly shading here with the pencil and we're going to be liquefying that in a moment. 
Now, while I was coloring, I actually laid my hand in that wet stamen and got a big splot of paint in the sky. So I brushed over with clear water and blotted it, never rub with a paper towel and was able to move most of the spot out of the paper. And we'll have to cover that up later with something else. Now I'm still going in and shading. I'm using both a mauve and also a darker purple pencil so I can get that nice depth of color. And then I'm using a damp brush to kind of drag the color around. If your brush is too wet, it's gonna just make a blob and then it's not going to look quite as nice. I always say that a mistake is an opportunity for embellishment. So what I'm going to do here is actually draw a leaf from behind the flower. That way, the fact that my background is ununiform because of the um, correction I had to make there from the ink splot mistake or paint splot rather. Um, so now I have wet the petal and I'm just dripping in yellow ochre and that dark green color mixed. And it's going to be a lovely little leaf that I hadn't planned for, but I actually think it looks pretty nice. Then I went around with that same darker green color on my brush and added shadows and veins to the other petals. I knew when I painted this that I wanted to have it printed on fabric, so I decided to go back in and add even more shadows with my colored pencil on the flowers. Now, something else you can do other than just um, coloring on the flower and then adding the shadows is you can actually use your brush to lift color off the tip of your pencil and add glazes of color that way. I also use that same technique on the leaves. Don't be afraid to dip your brush into the palette of paints if you need to change a color and to use different shades of pencils to blend and get the exact color you need. I often like to take a break and let my painting dry and give my eyes a chance to get away from the painting because then when I come back, I can see where I need to add more shadows and details. Here I'm using a mix of that dark green and burnt sienna to add some kind of darker shadows into the leaves. I find when I take a break and come back, I can add more layers and not make any hasty decisions with my painting. Here I'm adjusting the center of that flower and I've painted a little bit more color and then into the wet paint, I'm using my um, pencil to add some lines and then just dabbing in some yellow ochre for some pollen highlights in my picture. Now something I like to do, especially if I have a really stark background, is to add some splatters. And I'm just using my large round brush and some yellow ochre, purple, green, any colors I've already used is totally fair game with this. And I think it adds a really fun element to my painting. You don't have to do this, it's totally optional. It's just something I really enjoy doing. You can also get color from the tips of your pencils to speckle down too, like I am with this mob. I just think it it looks really fun and playful. I want to thank Snapfish for sponsoring this video today. You can find them online at snapfish.com and also there's a handy link in the video description. I want to thank you guys so much for painting along with me today. If you give this project a try, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Until next time, happy crafting!